out, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's my pleasure to introduce today Giovanni Donati. He's going to talk about experimental investigation of a micro ring based time delay reservoir computing. Uh, these days, uh, Giovanni is located in Trento, but he's doing a PhD, joint PhD between IFISC and the University of Trento. So please, Giovanni, if you're yours. Okay. So thank you, Miguel. Uh, so I will talk indeed about uh, the experimental investigation of uh, micro ring based time delay reservoir computing, and uh, I will follow this, uh, these points. So I will first uh, give an introduction about reservoir computing and time delay reservoir computing. And then I will uh, uh, also introduce, make an introduction about ring resonator and uh, some, their, uh, some of their use in uh, neuromorphic photonics. And then finally, I will talk about uh, the experimental realization I, I did uh, here in Trento. Uh, and then to for, for finally conclude with uh, some future perspective. So, um, so first, of, first of all, time, time delay uh, reservoir computing is a, is a new paradigm of a recurrent network which uh, uh, simplified the training. So um, the, the reservoir can be seen as an ensemble of units which are connected to each other and uh, with a topology which is fixed and with fixed also connection strength. So here the only trainable uh, uh, connection are the, one, are the ones that project to the output layer. Um, so the function of the reservoir can be uh, is uh, like to nonlinear map uh, uh, the input information to process into an higher dimensional space uh, where it is where a linear uh, classifier a linear readout can uh, uh, provide the correct answer of the network so an example is uh, is the one uh, can remove this okay is uh, provided here below there is an example where uh, we have we would like to separate uh, this uh, to uh, colored balls, but in a two-dimensional space, we are not able to do using a straight line. So what we can do is to map, non-linearly map it into an higher dimensional space and to use an hyperplane that is now able, so in this case, a plane in three dimension that is uh, now able to separate the two colored balls. So, um, okay. So uh, a nice example of uh, reservoir computing, um, which I would like to, to discuss is this one, where, um, is, um, uh, where there is a tank of water and uh, this tank of water is provided with uh, eight uh, Lego engines, which per the, perturb the surface in order according to a certain uh, eight dimensional input to process. So the, there is light which is shine from the bottom, uh, reach the surface where uh, uh, the state of the um, where this uh, th this light uh, reaches the the surface of the water where depending on the the input that we are giving is in a certain state and then finally reach uh, a camera placed on the top of the setup. So. Uh, uh, in this experiment, the authors used the pixel of the camera as the value of the nodes of a reservoir from which they computed the output layer. For instance, uh, in a XOR or speak, uh, speech recognition task. This is also a nice example because um, it uh, highlights the fact that instead of using time consuming computational neural model, uh, one can rely on the physics of particle interaction, which uh, in the system is for free because it comes from nature, in order to couple all uh, the virtual nodes. So um, um, leaving the job like uh, to nature and uh, uh, not using uh, um, enough power to compute the task. So uh, eco uh, reservoir computing are also uh, called eco-state networks. And this is an example where uh, there are four friends. Uh, actually, there are three, my colleagues and I, which uh, we were at the top of uh, some uh, mountains here in Trentino. And uh, we can receive like input from outside, like for example, via phone call, but also we would like to communicate with each other. And so we speak loudly. So we can imagine that everyone we receive uh, will hear something which is very complicated because not only 
uh, given by what others are saying, but also because of uh, echoes that the mountains provide. So this is also true if we consider only one node, where, for example, uh, that will influence himself in the future by his uh, own echoes. So this situation can be like recovered by using a ring resonator with an optical feedback where uh, we are where uh, the signal to that um, the signal that uh, we are injecting is light and is in, uh, injected at the input port and where we observe the drop port of the signal so also on the on the feedback line we are able to tune the feedback strength and phase which uh, uh, indeed the, the strength allows to uh, modulate the, the importance of the feedback signal uh, and, and so of the echoes and uh, the phase uh, has no analogy in this example but refers to light. Um, so one can do for example, for example this experiment where uh, a series of pulses are introduced at the input port of the ring and uh, these pulses are well separated in time sat, um, in particular, much more than the time provided by the feedback. So one can uh, observe that uh, at the drop port, uh, for each uh, input pulse that we provide, which is here on the right axis, um, uh, described the, by the arbitrary waveform generator signal that we use to modulate these pulses at the input, for each of these input, we are we can um, have at the drop port. Uh, uh, a correspondent output spike, but also followed by a series of uh, uh, other spikes, uh, which indeed uh, um, correspond to the to these echoes that are able to um, to iterate several times uh, um, the system. So, um, um, so this uh, fading. Uh, these uh, echoes provide the, the property, the fading memory pro property of uh, reservoir computing, which together with the consistency, uh, separation property, and approximation properties uh, allows uh, uh, to make reservoir computing. So now the question is, um, since um, at the beginning I was saying that one of the function of the reservoir computing is to non-linearly map the input into an higher dimensional space, how can we recover this uh, high dimension, higher dimensionality using this system? So an, uh, uh, an answer was uh, suggested and introduced uh, around 10 years ago by Apple Tand, which uh, uh, um, this suggested the idea to um, unfold, uh, to, to fold the recurrent network into the dynamic of only one node. Okay, so at this time, uh, the dynamic of this node is sampled at different times and prov uh, providing the state of virtual nodes because time multiplexed in the response of the only real node that we have, from which we can then compute the output layer. Another difference with respect to the traditional approach is um, the input layer, which uh, typically, uh, even if uh, we are, um, we would like to process a high dimensional uh, input. Uh, what we do with time multiplex uh, with time delay reservoir computing is to time multiplex uh, uh, the information. So in time, and also we add a mask such to trigger uh, a richer uh, um, response of the real node. So this, of course, um, brings to a, a disadvantage, which is the loss of parallelism but also to an advantage because of the lower hardware requirement for a physical implementation. So there are uh, uh, physical uh, implementation, implementation that have been already done like at FISC using the response of a, uh, of a laser or like um, here where they, in this work where they used um, uh, a, fiber, uh, a fiber loop as a reservoir or, for example, also going integrated, where they are using, uh, where they use an DBR laser and the spirals and the wave waveguide spirals to provide uh, a feedback 
which is also uh, amplified by using two SOA. <coughs> so, um, so in this work, we are trying to, um, to exploit the dynamics of only one ring resonator to make time delays of one computing. So first of all, a ring resonator is, can be described as a band waveguide closed on itself, which is able to experience the output put uh, the, the, output, the, the, the rest of the world by the optical coupling with other, uh, with other waveguides. For example, this is an ad hoc filter configuration where the input arrives from the input port and depending if it's resonant or not, is dropped or, pop or propagate through. So uh, there is a simple couple motiri and scattering matrix approach that uh, can um, provides the linear frequency response of the system. And uh, this uh, linear frequency response can be seen as a series of Lorentzian peak. Okay, here there is a zoom. And uh, in correspondence of which uh, at, the, at the through port, we have a dip of the transmission. So every time we have a resonance, the light propagates to the, to the drop port. But if, if we are out of resonance, the drop port goes to zero while the through goes to one. So all the light propagates through. So these uh, ring resonators are especially uh, exploited nowadays in telecom centers in order to route the, the optical information in large, large networks built on chip. Uh, regarding these linear properties, uh, I find uh, a nice uh, application in aeromorphic photonics is to use um, this capability to transmit, for example, at the drop or the through port, uh, depending on the detuning, uh, different amount uh, of light to wait uh, an incoming signal. And this can be done, uh, for example, uh, this, uh, so these linear properties as exploited in a weight bank which can be seen as the, um, as the weights of a photonic neuron. So in this example, we take real advantage of the intrinsic parallelism of uh, photonics, which allows to wavelength, which allow, uh, allows wavelength division multiplexing. So the capability to send many wavelengths channel onto one same physical channel. And we can interpret many uh, ring resonators to be selective to one of these wavelength channels and to weight them precisely indep and independently. For example, um, um, there is a protocol which is named the Broadcast and Weight Protocol, where we have this um, weight bank at the input of each photonic neuron. Uh, which, is, which are then followed by a photo detection, uh, by a balanced photo detection, whose current provides the weighted input um, operation. And this current is then uh, used into an electro -optic optical converter to reintroduce into the network uh, uh, a nonlinear uh, transformation of the weighted input onto one of the wavelengths channel used in the application. An example of uh, this protocol uh, applied on a real uh, network is provided here, where this is the uh, is an hidden layer of, the, of a fit for a neural network and where the wavelengths, there are two wavelengths which are reintroduced at each layer, okay, and which uh, are modulated. And um, they are equal, they are split into the neurons of the following layers. And each neuron of the following layer is composed by two ring because two are the wavelengths that have been, uh, that are being used. So the, each wavelength is uh, respectively weighted and the balance uh, photo detector then uh, produces the current, which goes to modulate the PN junction of a farther ring, okay? so. In this way, the transmission of this ring, uh, the resonance shift according to the current that the, the, this ring is receiving. And so at the next layer where the, the two wavelengths are restored by a continuous wave signal, uh, 
uh, it is possible to imprint the nonlinear effects of the previous layer onto this uh, new uh, onto this new restored signal, which is then propagates to the following layers. Another uh, possibility is to use uh, the nonlinearities in silicon, which are particularly uh, like uh, favorable in uh, silicon microring resonators due to the air enhancement factor. And uh, here uh, we have that um, if one photon is not sufficient to provide uh, an electron from the valence to the conduction band, then two photons can be, if absorbed in a very narrow interval of time, they can pro provide this energy and so uh, promote uh, this excitation. So what happens is that um, by changing the level of recurrence inside the ring waveguide and also due to um, consequent release of phonons which hit uh, the waveguide, the, um, the resonance of the ring is, um, is shifted. In particular, is blue shifter where an increase of recovery is achieved, or uh, red shifter whether a term, an increase of temperature is achieved. And this uh, uh, also is done with different time scales, so that if one is interested to process at fast times to to fast processing, it is better to uh, by targeting the the free carrier because it's uh, two order of magnitude faster than the thermal optical effects. Uh, this is another example where uh, they use uh, uh, a reservoir of five uh, of a four by four uh, matrix of ring resonators where they use uh, the nonlinear effects of the ring. So the here the rings are coupled by uh, waveguides, combiners, and splitter, and their state is detector such. Uh, and provide uh, the state of the neurons, like in a reservoir uh, scheme, that is um, exploited to to estimate the output. And um, so, finally, uh, in my uh, in what I was trying to do in the last year numerically, we tried to use a nonlinear to model a nonlinear uh, ring resonator coupled to an external optical feedback, such to produce. Uh, such to solve some task. So here, the, as I was telling before, the information to process is time multiplexed, and in particular is uh, amplitude uh, encoded. Uh, uh, the information in, is injected into the structure, so it can partially propagate to the ring or to the feedback, and the drop response is uh, sampled to provide the virtual nodes that are then weighted sum to provide the 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 state of the network. So we target the nonlinear, the, the free carrier nonlinearity because I was telling before is faster. And uh, here is an example of uh, the dynamics that can be achieved. So one can uh, decide to target the free carrier nonlinearity. One can encode each bit to process uh, to stretch it for a time that match more or less the free carrier time scale. So if the free carrier time scale is three nanoseconds, we encode the input signal for a time of one nanosecond each one. So here the dotted line correspond to the input to process before the masking, while the continuous line corresponds to the input to process after the masking, where the mask is uh, uh, a, fun a stepwise function that uh, is uh, constant over uh, uh, interval of length theta with, with theta much lower than the, the duration of the bit and where this mask is repeated uh, periodically for each bit we want to process. Uh, in this example, what I wanted to show is that, for example, uh, for the largest, for the highest bit we are injecting, we are indeed uh, moving the resonance uh, where the movement is indicated by this blue uh, line, while the red line, which uh, is, is the contribute to the rational shift uh, by the thermal time scale, by the thermal nonlinearity, is almost constant, meaning that uh, indeed we are able to trigger only the nonlinearity, um, non to trigger only free current nonlinearities, but, on, but not the thermal ones because they are too slow to see the, this phase, uh, this changing, uh, because they are so fast. 
So basically from the numerical word, uh, work, uh, what uh, was um, well, the main observation were, were three processing schemes where, that were available. One where we used the linear ring uh, coupled to the feedback and where the only nonlinearity was due to the detection nonlinearity. A second one where we use also the nonlinearity of the ring and a third one where uh, um, we uncoupled the ring from the feedback. So uh, we didn't use the feedback and we realized that uh, some task like the Santa Fe prediction task was also solved in this configuration. And this is because the, the inertia of the nonlinearity itself could provide a source of memory. So for example, if an input bit was uh, triggering some, uh, was promoting some africares inside the ring, a next input, so injected later, could still see these africares into the ring and so be affected uh, in the dynamics. And uh, another important uh, observation from the numerical world was that uh, the strength, the phase of the feedback, the detuning and the input power were critical parameters for uh, task op optimization. And so based on this uh, uh, observation, uh, I tried to realize um, a, a system which was able to, to reproduce uh, in particular these uh, parameters that emerged critical. So um, what we used uh, uh, in this experimental implementation is an hybrid approach in the sense that uh, we have an in we design uh, um, a ring in a drop filter configuration on a silicon insulator chip. But uh, uh, at this step, uh, the, um, the feedback is provided by uh, an external fiber, optical fiber, single mode optical fiber. So uh, again, we can see that uh, we are injecting the input to the input port. We go to the through port. And from the through port, there are uh, gratings, which in particular are aligned in order to couple with a fiber array for, uh, uh, for an easy uh, coupling to all the waveguides at the same time. From the through port, light is coupled to one of the fiber of the fiber array uh, and then propagates out where there is a fiber loop which provides the delay we want and then re-enters to the add port to then couple back to the ring or, or go into the drop port where we have the response of the structure where we, uh, uh, where we sample the virtual nodes. In particular, uh, uh, to realize the feedback strength and the feedback phase uh, parameters <clears throat> we were interested in in numerical work, I used a semiconductor optical amplifier in the fiber loop and a phase shifter in the, uh, in the, in the phase loop again. Also, I used uh, a monitor in order to detect the optical power along the feedback loop. So this is an example of the uh, of the real measurements of the real measures of the of the fiber array and of the chip, just to give an idea. So uh, one of the first uh, thing that we need to face uh, was to sub stabilize the system against thermal, vibrational, and phonic noise. This because uh, uh, by having an output optical fiber, uh, the system is very sensible. To, to this environmental noise. In particular, if we enter with a continuous wave signal, uh, what, uh, yeah. what we can see at the output is something that uh, uh, is very oscillating over time. And so it's not stable. And this can be seen as an interference between the, the field, because what we are detecting at the output is at the end, the interference between the field that is uh, coupled, that is uh, coming from the ring, and the field, the optical field that is coming from the feedback loop. So, if delta phi is uh, the phase difference between the two, uh, these two arms, then we have that delta, delta phi is varying over time because 
of the noise that I, I was telling you before that affects uh, the fiber loop, the signal uh, propagating into the fiber loop. So what we did uh, in order to stabilize the system was to produce, um, uh, was to develop this uh, stabilization system, which is based on Arduino. So actually from the detector, we take the, um, the output of the detector and uh, we use it as an input to Arduino. Then uh, we use the, uh, the logical uh, output uh, uh, of Arduino. To, uh, and then uh, we use a digital to analog converter to uh, codify this, uh, this signal into an analog uh, value. So basically I forgot to say, um, Arduino, what does is to estimate a correction uh, uh, that uh, we need to apply in order to, correct, to compensate for these uh, uh, fluctuations in the output signal. So the error, um, the error function that we have uh, over time is sent uh, to this digital to analog converter, which is then uh, sent to a voltage amplifier. And this voltage amplifier controls a phase shifter along the feedback loop. Okay, this, uh, P this is a piezo phase shifter, meaning that there is a piezo, uh, a piezo electric material which changes dimension according to the voltage that is receiving and uh, attached to the sides of this uh, piezo uh, material, there is an optical fiber, which uh, accordingly is stressed over time. And by stress the fiber, and so changing its length, one can change uh, the phase of the optical signal along the feedback. And if uh, this uh, uh, correction is uh, well made, then one can compensate for the um, variation in phase that were accumulated due to the environmental noise. And these are an example where uh, in uh, the figure, we are able to um, stabilize the system over time. Um, okay. Uh, but I have to say also that there are uh, situations in which uh, in which uh, the system uh, fails. Um, this happens, for, for example, where there are uh, strong vibration on, on the optical bands, for example. Anyway, uh, I also want to note that uh, uh, here I am plotting uh, a time window of five seconds. Okay, but the task, the duration of a task is uh, more or less 500 microseconds, so half of a millisecond. So in half of a millisecond, uh, so it's a very um, small time compared to this uh, one that I'm plotting. And um, yes, so here, this is the setup that I, I used. So I have a, a tunable laser source, which provides our uh, laser light. Then I have the Max Zender interferometer, which uh, is driven by an arbitrary waveform generator at 500 megahertz, and that works uh, in quadrature by using a bias control. This signal is amplified using an Edbion top fiber amplifier. Then I use a variable optical attenuator and a polarization control in order to match the polarization uh, required by the chip. Then the drop port, so the output of the chip, is sent to an optical filter, which uh, like uh, uh, um, is uh, like included in order to um, suppress the amplif spontaneous amplification of the SOA along the, the feedback uh, loop. And then after the optical filter, uh, there are two channels. So one channel uh, is composed by a fast photo detector, which is able to see the task uh, modulation. And uh, so to, from which we then we sample the virtual nodes and, you, and we compute the output of the network. While the other channel uh, is composed by a, a slower detector, which is not able to see uh, the fast modulation of the task induced by the task but uh, instead is able to see those fluctuations induced by the environmental noise, uh, which are peaked uh, in particular around 10 kilohertz. So 
Uh, and then um, by using this detector, you, we use the, the, the system that I already described in the slide before in order to stabilize the system. So uh, what we did was to test the, the memory and the nonlinearities of the system by using at this moment delayed, delayed Boolean task. So we inject into the system a pseudo random uh, binary sequence. Uh, an optical pseudo random binary sequence of one zero masked. And then uh, we compute some task, some Boolean task like the end, the XOR, the OR, the NAND, and also the M MC, where for MCI uh, simply uh, mean the, the capability to, to recover a certain uh, previous bit. So these tasks uh, have, are made using as uh, input uh, the actual input, the, so the actual bit, and as a second input, uh, a bit that was already introduced in the past into the structure. So this uh, is done to test the memory of the system, basically. And this because uh, uh, then the output of the structures, so the output of the network is provided only by the current, by the response to the current bit. So uh, the virtual nodes that I sampled corresponding to the current bit must have a contribute given by past information to properly solve the ta this task, because these tasks are made by the, between the current bit and something that was previously injected. And if the answer here is only given, um, is only like, mm, the contribute to the answer here is only given by the actual link. Of course, uh, there is no possibility to compute correctly the task. While if there is some memory, then uh, the values of these virtual nodes uh, can provide the correct answer. And uh, also remembering that uh, the XOR between this task, the XOR is also a nonlinear task. So that uh, if we are able to solve the XOR task, we are also able to, to, to say that uh, uh, there is, we are uh, correctly using the system provides enough nonlinearity to, to solve the task. Uh, so these are example of results for the MC task. So for the recalling of previous bit. So um, the first thing we can observe is that if we are on resonant, uh, so first of all, uh, on the y-axis, we have the detuning, so um, the difference between the pumping wavelength and the resonance wavelength. On the x-axis, we have the SOA current, so which gives the strength of the feedback. And then uh, here is reported the, the phase of the, of the feedback that we target with Arduino. So uh, MC1 refers to, to the task where we are trying to recover the previous bit value. MC2 rec um, two bit, uh, two bit in the, we are trying to recover two bit in the past and, the, and in MC3, we are trying to recover three bit in the past. So the first thing we can observe is that uh, uh, when we are on resonance, so when the detuning is zero, so lambda pump is equal lambda zero, the light follows the red uh, path and so is not able to iterate multiple times through the network. And so here, independently on the strength of the feedback, uh, there is no memory. Another thing that we can observe is that uh, um, even if we are detuned so that there is power that is circulating along uh, the feedback ring circle uh, loop, uh, for small SOA current, the task is not solved, meaning that, uh, um, and this because uh, the SOA current for this, uh, the SOA for this current uh, is acting like an absorber, it's not amplifying. And then uh, we can see that uh, the task is solved uh, for largest current. Anyway, if we go to, uh, if we require the network to recover a large bit uh, in the past, a bit uh, from the far past, for instance, for example, three uh, bit in the past, 
we see that uh, the, the current that we need to provide to the, to the structure is larger. Um, okay, these are instead example of the, of the results obtained with the one bit delayed sort task. Again, we have the SOA current on the X axis, the, the tuning on the Y axis, and the phase uh, here reported. So in particular, the phase uh, goes uh, from a situation where is uh, approaching constructive interference, okay, down to a situation where we are almost at uh, pi difference of phase, where so where we are in a um, destructive interference at the drop port of the ring, and we can, as we can see, uh, the bit, the best bit that rate uh, that is uh, found in this map. Okay, follow a trend that uh, decrease as uh, we uh, approach the destructive interference at the drop port. So in particular, reaching a zero bit, bit error rate, for example, in this case of one bit delay XOR task. Uh, this trend is also repeated for uh, two bit delay XOR task. So we are, when we are trying to do the task between the current bit, and uh, considering the current bit and uh, a bit that we introduced to uh, delay in the past. And uh, also in this case, so we are uh, observing the same trends for the, with the addition that uh, the region of best performance of are narrower, are narrower. While, for example, in the end task, the trend is opposite. So the bit error rate is zero when there is constructive interference at the output. Okay, so here, and gradually decrease going uh, toward destructive interference. So this uh, also suggests that the PID and the target, so the, 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 the stabilization system and the possibility to tune the phase of the feedback signal using Arduino is actually working. And uh, so these are the results, uh, the global results we, uh, I obtained in the task. So uh, here on the x-axis, I have the, the number of previous bits that I'm considering in the task. And the, on the y-axis, I have the bit error rate. So these curves refer to the, the best bit error rate achieved in all the task. In the case, I used three virtual nodes or in the case, I use seven virtual nodes, okay? And uh, as can be observed, in the case where I, oops, I um, used seven virtual nodes, which uh, was achieved by increasing the length of the feedback, the results are better. Uh, in particular, achieving uh, a zero bit error rate for XOR task up to two uh, uh, bit uh, by considering the two bit uh, in the past. So for uh, conclusion and photo perspective, so most of the effort uh, in this experimental part was uh, dedicated to stabilize the system against this environmental fluctuation, which I was able uh, finally to, to do using this Arduino controller that I explained. So in this year, I also set up all the optical bands that uh, I then used to perform uh, this, uh, the experiments. And in particular, I tested the memory of the system in this uh, delayed Boolean task. So uh, since the task uh, uh, can be solved up to a certain uh, with memories that depends on the task, but anyway, this, uh, this allows to say that um, the system has, uh, is exhibiting memory and sufficient nonlinearity in order to solve them. As a possible improvement, one can think to upgrade Arduino with a faster FPGA in the stabilization system. And uh, it is also um, a good idea to use an, um, an amplification step also at the output of the, the, of the, of the ring in order to, uh, before the optical filter, in order to increase the signal to noise ratio. And uh, another possibility is to use a faster arbitrary waveform generator for the input encoding. 
because this allows a faster mask and so a fast uh, a larger number of virtual nodes or if one wants to keep the number of virtual nodes fixed this allows to place the same number of virtual nodes within a, a feedback delay time which is lower and so this allows to use uh, um, um, an optical fiber with a lower length which uh, thus is less sensible to noise as uh, by continuing with this reasonment uh, so one of the final uh, one of the future perspective is an integration of the system so uh, we did i did uh, this um, so during this year i also learned how to design uh, some structures and uh, this for example is one of the structure of uh, that i designed which is an upgraded version of the uh, of the system i discussed today so where in particular the optical uh, feedback is provided by a waveguide and where we have a heater which is which uh, provides the possibility to to tune the phase and there we, where we have also um, this um, uh, interferometer which allows through uh, the insertion of <coughs> of an heater into one of the two arms to tune also the the, the, the strength of the feedback uh, also <coughs> sorry uh, also what i did was to introduce not only one ring but two rings these two rings have um, one of the two rings have an eater so uh, that is uh, like introduced such to to give the possibility to tune to tune the resonance by increasing the temperature of the ring so this allows uh, to recover also the single ring uh, uh, scheme by simply driving out uh, of uh, of the pumping wavelength uh, this uh, this ring so we can use a pumping wavelength which is coupling with this ring but uh, moving the resonance of this ring out so that uh, is it should not uh, interact with the dynamics but otherwise we can use two rings and also these rings uh, uh, the waveguide are in blue one huh? so uh, in addition to the waveguide uh, we also built some um, we also keep these two rings with um, a pn junction such to modulate uh, the the free carrier lifetime into these two rings moreover uh, the structure is able to provide uh, multiple output signal instead of only one for instance up to now i, I was using only the drop signal but uh, we can uh, like uh, grasp some of the signal along the structure and uh, in such a way that we can use um, the virtual node sampling approach not only with one wind, uh, one signal but on multiple signal at the same time and this allows also to increase the number of virtual nodes potentially another future perspective <coughs> and the final one and I, I will conclude is this one which is uh, lasing so for example if we if we switch off the laser but we switch on we switch on uh, the SOA what uh, we found is that uh, uh, we create uh, a loop which is this one that uh, couple the the feedback loop with the ring you know and uh, that's way um, even if there is no input to that way that way is uh, emitting a noise so what happens is that if we increase the current to that way there is a, a, a threshold up to which the at the drop port I start to observe lasing. So this can be observed by looking at this image. For lower current at the drop port, I only see uh, the the noise of the sway with uh, some dips which corresponds to the ring. So uh, the wavelengths emitted by the sway, which are resonance, we will will go. Um, will be affected by, by more losses because they are uh, coupled to the ring and so there are these dips but if we increase the sway current 
finally, there are a certain threshold in which uh, one of these uh, resonance start to lasing. But if we increase more the length, the, the, length, the, the sway current, then we can see that more resonance are starting to lasing. And so we could uh, end up in a drop signal, which is uh, uh, composed of many wavelengths. And uh, uh, even if now I'm, uh, I still have to define a clear strategy, uh, I think that this may be exploited for some uh, computations. So after telling this, uh, I think I can conclude and thank you, all of you, for the attention. Thank you, Giovanni, uh, for the nice presentation. And uh, now it's time for questions. So if you have a question, please raise your hand or unmute uh, the microphone from, uh, from the audience, please. Hi, Giovanni. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, OK, I have a lot of doubts regarding the times of the, of the system. Like, um, when you say you're using so there, there are two different effects. One is related to the free carrier and the other one to the thermal effects, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Uh -huh. And you're using the one of the free carrier that is about three nanoseconds, you said, if I'm yes. not wrong. Okay. And then I'm lost in the part of what is the delay length and what is the, the length of the, virtu the separation between virtual nodes? Yes, uh, because, um, Alora, I can go here. Uh, since I started with the numeric, so if you maybe yes, yes. Um, ah, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here always, yes, because in numerical words uh, we use the uh, the free carrier time scale, which was uh, three nanoseconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, we received chips uh, which are uh, anomalous in the sense that they have uh, free carrier and thermal time scale, which are completely different from the um, time, cell, time scale which are uh, reported in literature. Mm -hmm. So we also asked to the foundry why, but they didn't uh, provide us an answer. So mm -hmm. probably they changed the process, uh, the fabrication process, and in some way they changed the, the properties uh, such that at the end uh, the free carrier time scale was around 50 nanoseconds, while the thermal time scale was around 300. Nanoseconds. 15, 15 nanoseconds. Yes. Uh -huh. And well, and also I want to know, this is just uh, because I have no idea. Um, this two photon absorption phenomena does not happen when you have a lot of optical injection power or does it always happen? Yes, it, uh, it happens only if there is uh, enough uh, input power, of course, yes. And you can have that input power in your micro ring resonators? Yes, I can have it in the experiment, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Uh, I, I, in the results I show, I didn't mm -hmm. uh, target uh, the nonlinearity of the ring. So, so I used uh, the uh, the system um, by using an input power which are much lower than uh, um, the power needed to trigger uh, like mm -hmm. cell passing phenomena, and I was okay. re and I relied only with. Um, on the free, on the detection of linearities and the feedback in order to provide the memory to the system. Okay. Um, okay. How much is that power? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> it depends uh, on the ring. It uh -huh. depends on how you design the ring, and so but... on the enhancement factor. Mm -hmm. And you lose a lot, or you don't so... lose that much? And so... I'm just asking that because I was using some micro ring resonators and I was losing a lot of power while passing through them. So I'm wondering if all of them have the same effect. Around one milliv milliwatt at the ring, at the input port should be, in my case, is sufficient uh, to promote uh, uh, free um, to promote nonlinear effects. Uh -huh. I don't okay. know what, uh, but depends uh, on the quality factor of your rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. And, and so in the experimental implementation, uh, then what was the, the delay? The, the total length of the delay. I use 88 was... nanoseconds. 88 nanoseconds. And this is provided by the phase shift and all the stuff, right? Yeah. And the SOA, polarization controller. Blah, Everything, blah, blah. yes. Okay. And then the virtual node separation is? 
the virtual node separation is 11 nanoseconds. 11 nanoseconds, and that is how much virtual nodes then? <laughs> I use seven uh, virtual nodes, so it's uh, 77 uh, nanoseconds. And then I also use the anasynchronous, anasynchronous regime in order to mm -hmm. couple the virtual nodes. Okay, so yeah. where I use the uh, an unsynchronization step of one. Okay, and that is a virtual node separation of? 11 nanoseconds. Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right. Yeah, because I was seeing that the photo detector was 0 0.6 gigahertz, and I was wondering what was the virtual node separation, but that makes sense, I guess. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's everything from my part. <laughs> Thanks for okay. the presentation, Giovanni. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. Okay. Uh, more questions? Uh, Apostolos has raised his hand. Yeah, please. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, I think when you described the uh, the application of the experimental system to solve the XOR or ENT uh, tasks, you mentioned about constructive and destructive interference, but I think you explained it uh, oppositely. Uh, can you confirm that when you solve the XOR task, you need constructive interference? When I solve the XOR, the, the XOR task, I need... You destructive interference. Exactly. So you were writing here that approaching constructive interference still provides the best performance. What do you mean by that? Ah, no, no, no. Uh, there is an error. Uh, this is destructive. This is what I'm Thank you. Thank you, okay. Apostolos. Yes. Uh, you mentioned also about the FPGA. I mean, you may increase the speed of the Arduino, but clearly the problem in these uh, P uh, PHO elements is that you need uh, quite high voltage to, to, to stretch up the fiber. And in this case, I saw that you were using the 200 uh, hertz amplifier. Yes. How, yes, can, you increase, the, yes, how can you increase this number in order to fit in with a very fast uh, PGA for a fast PLN? And one needs uh, a faster, a faster uh, voltage amplifier in order to use uh, the, the faster correction speed of an FPGA, but also it should use uh, uh, something different from uh, probably a, a piezo phase shifter, so like a, a phase shifter, so like a Maxander interferometer. Yeah, because these high voltage amplifiers are not easy to find with high no, no. range. Uh, I, uh, I'm using uh, I'm using like a piezo controller of the Torlabs, which are uh, like built in order to. Uh, for the holding system that uh, uh, of the fiber array, so this uh, I can move it with uh, nano with nanometer uh, uh, step. Okay, I can do it manually, but there is also the option to um, to to move this uh, uh, this holding system by using this uh, piezo this piezo instruments, and so. Um, I'm using this uh, this, ampli this voltage okay. amplifier that are built uh, for uh, this uh, holding system, mm -hmm. but anyway they are uh, very slow. But anyway, is they are slow, but uh, they allow uh, they allow to to solve the task. Mm -hmm. okay. And a final, let's say, conceptual question because we are using also here photonic systems uh, that can respond to much faster time scales. How do you see? I mean, you see that the nonlinearity and the response time of these micro resonators for filter banks or weight banks are okay. But in order to do processing, you are limited through this temporal scale of the free carrier effect, which is some or tens of nanoseconds. Then this limits the speed for computation. When we are talking about photonics, and we can match everything in gigahertz regimes, uh, clearly the micro is, let's say, a slow solution for yes. computing. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> a, general, a general comment on that. Yes, indeed, in the integrated, uh, in the integrated uh, uh, design uh, that is already on fabrication, we build, uh, we build, uh, we equip the, the micro ring resonator with PN junction which uh, if operated in a reverse bias, they are extracting the free carriers. And so they can lower down the free carrier time scale uh, up to hundreds of picoseconds. So in that case, uh, the, the free carrier nonlinearity time scale can be decreased. 
of course uh, there is one also needs to say that uh, uh, by uh, removing free carriers um, the nonlinearity effects are lower or uh, one needs uh, to reach the same nonlinearity effects maybe by increasing the input the power. power yeah okay thank you thank you Okay, other questions? Well, just a short, short question, Miguel. Yes. Uh, Giovanni, you, you, following the first question by Apostolos, you have a different phases for the two tasks. Do you know why you need to have constructor or destructive for XOR or AND? What are the differences in the two that you I may need some, constructive? Uh, Maybe because of the OR or AND conditions? Because I have, uh, I have some arguments. So, for example, in the XOR task, um, let's go here to the table. Uh, for the XOR task, mm -hmm. so we have one, we have to separate these two, uh, these four uh, kind of inputs. So, where we have one, only where we have uh, zero, one, or one, zero. So, one, uh, a possibility to, to, to separate. Uh, these two classes is to like make interference con uh, co destructive interference condition between the actual bit and the delayed bit mm -hmm. so that the power that uh, results at the output for this uh, in this case uh, is very low and can be like uh, similar to these values mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and in this case yeah. if the power are much lower for this case and for this case, then a threshold can be reached uh, mm -hmm. by separating uh, this and this from the from the case where the output is one. I don't know if I was clear because I would yeah, need yeah, yeah, a I, I understand what you mean. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yes, okay. and then I see also that in the end, exactly, you need in to the end is the opposite. power to the one one. Yeah. So you need to provide constructive interference in this way. You separate uh, very clearly the the one one from the rest of the others. Where the and the zero zero is not one, no zero zero is zero and one one is one. Okay. Yes, there is there is only the one one that uh, is one respect to the mm -hmm. others, and so but yeah. it basically it, it is clear. Uh, okay. It is clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? If I may, then I have one question myself. Yes. In the final perspective for this design that you that you showed, uh, Giovanni. Yes. Uh, you suggest uh, to measure now the signal at different output ports. Do you have an idea if the signal that you will measure are different enough, so you can actually use them for computing and they give you they will give you different information? Do you have any indications for that? Um, I mean, they are for sure different because. Uh, mm, for example, this signal um, is um, include the response of the of uh, sorry, one moment, uh, because this signal is uh, extracted suddenly after this uh, second ring, and so it uh, like extracts the feedback signal after uh, this ring. While, for example, the the other channel. Uh, it also takes into account uh, the dynamics of the first ring. Okay, so by playing uh, with the also with the PN junction, which are uh, um, equipped uh, in the ring, uh, one can, uh, in principle, um, produce output that can be diverse and so which can be exploited to effectively enhance the number of virtual nodes which can participate to the processing but uh, uh, yes <clears throat> i didn't do uh, simulations uh, we did this uh, only by thinking that was a, a possible option and uh, so we we added this uh, output parts but they came for free because uh, as i told you before um, the structure also work uh, as a single ring uh, as the one that i just uh, uh, experienced in the lab by simply moving the other uh, uh, resonators out of resonance and so we decided to to add uh, uh, a second ring 
in order to have the possibility to exploit the schistor and eventually also to but um, eventually also the possibility to extract this uh, further output that uh, of which we are not sure the, uh, that will lead to effectively an higher performance but uh, in principle they could so why not to try yeah, yeah okay thanks yeah. other questions that doesn't seem to be the case so thank you again giovanni thank you to all of you for your, for your time and for the for answering the questions and for the presentation so see you see you soon i guess thank you, thank you giovanni bye 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 bye, bye. 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 bye.